Hey everyone, welcome to part two or part three of our kitchen install video. Uh, I'll link to part one and part two uh, up the top here somewhere or in the description below. So you can, if you haven't watched them first, watch them where we build our cupboards and everything first. Uh, in this video, we're going to install our Evercool DC-175 fridge as well as our oven which is a Thetford Caprice fan-forced oven, as well as install all of our shelving um, and our microwave. So, enjoy. All right, so we're just about to put the fridge in. We've had to drill a 16 mil hole at the back for the drain hose from the condensation that it produces. And this is the electrical connection for it. So I just bought a two-way uh, Easy Connect connector. Because it's on top of our batteries, we are going to get a slide out for it, but we can't get that till we're on the road because no one near us does it. So we wanted it to be potentially disconnectable. So I bought one of these. I just put the uh, the female on the you know bus end, and then I've put the male on the uh, fridge end. So that way we can just plug it in and unplug it if we have to. But fingers crossed, we never have to. So I've just attached the Evercool mounting kit to our fridge. Uh, so it just comes in with, in three pieces of this angled aluminium. Uh, we got significantly more pieces, but we spoke to the Evercool rep and he said that we weren't supposed to get half of them. So we don't know what they're for. You're just supposed to get three, maybe four if you get one of the top pieces for each left hand and right hand. So you, the hole just needs to go over there rotating bit and then it goes down so the aluminium comes with pre drilled holes but there's no holes in the top of the fridge so the ever cool guy said you can drill through a couple of centimeters as long as you go where the holes are so we've just used what we had on hand which was 20 mil countersunk screws obviously some flush mount screws or something would be better but we had countersunk so just five at the top and then four down each side. So this is not a flush mount uh, mounting kit, which is what they call it, because it makes the fridge stick out, you know, the width of the door, that way it can open. So if you do want to try and flush mount it, you sort of have to build a recessed frame. We're not worrying about making it look that nice. We've seen some pictures, you can do it, but yeah, we're just gonna have the fronts stick out. So now we're just going to push the fridge in and mount it to our walls. Okay, and so here's the mounting kit on the wall. So we've just attached it, two screws in the top, bottom and sides. And then screw down the bottom there. So we're screwing in the end grain of melamine, so it's probably not the best thing in the world. Let's focus this again. But it seems pretty sturdy. Uh, and yeah, so that's how much it sticks out. So obviously, let me unlock it. So if you were to flush mount it, yeah, you sort of need to leave room for it to, like it can open all the way, so. Yeah. Otherwise, that's, that's it. That's the mounting kit installed. Okay, so this is the wiring for the oven. So you've got the two positives for the ignition going into one positive and then the negative for the ignition going into the same negative. You also have this white cable over here which we weren't sure what to do with and there's not a lot of information on it. It's actually the negative for the oven light. So this just needs to connect to the same oven point as this one. So that's what it looks like on the oven. And this is it here. So negative for the oven light coming into the bus bar, negative for the oven coming into the bus bar, and then positive going in, and then I think I've got a, so that looks like a 10 amp fuse on it. And it's just a quick look at the gas connection. Uh, you gotta use rigid copper pipe, it actually says you can't use hoses. Um, and yeah, you sort of have to connect it while it's a 30, and we were a bit confused at first, but I mean, that's all stuff for your gas plumber to do, and yeah, because we, uh, you are 
can't do it yourself, so it's up to them, really. All right, then we've just screwed them in the sides, there, there, and then you're meant to do them there and there, but our piece of wood doesn't go low enough for whatever reason, uh, and these screws just screw into that 15 mil piece that, yeah, is on the side behind this. up on our drawers where to attach our little sliding baskets so because they're 22.6 centimeters I think wide and our drawer is like yeah and our drawer is 300 or so um, we're not going to put them center because then there's wasted space either side. So we're putting them on one side. It leaves, only leaves, you know, seven centimeters or eight centimeters or something. But, you know, it might be enough to put some bottles or some hand towels or something like that. Where did these little sliding baskets come from? Uh, we have sliding baskets from Howard Storage World. They're simple human brand. Uh, they come in three sizes. Uh, because all of our cupboards are really weird sizing, we can only really fit the small one in most of the places. Um, yeah, we looked at heaps of other like baskets and stuff, like the ones that are attach on the sides. But they're all made to fit standard size cupboards, which we just don't have. Um, so yeah, we saw these and we're like, well this works because you can sort of build around them and they mount on the bottom so they can just mount to a shelf rather than having to mount to the sides and possibly lose heaps of space. Shows what it looks like. Okay, so this is the shelf that's going under our sink. So we're just gonna cut some holes where the uh, hoses, like the hot cold and the drain hose is gonna go. So yeah, just took the measurements because we've already got it all hooked up. Uh, uh, probably easier to put the shelves in before you put that sort of thing in, but as you already know, we did everything in really weird ways. So yeah. To go into the floor, did a lot tighter than what I'm going to do now, obviously because this isn't going into the ground or into the exterior at all, like it can be a bit looser. Cool, now I think we're also going to put one of those baskets on the side of this as well. Alright, so we've just installed some push to close um, things for our kitchen cabinets. Uh, I found they're pretty easy to install. You just get, they're all different but all relatively the same. You just get your base. And I found the easiest way is to just measure to where your holes are. And, and then, yeah, just mark your pilot holes, do your pilot holes, and then 
put them up. Um, if you've got instructions, that is essentially what they tell you to do anyway. Um, but yeah, and then you stick the magnetic bit on that, take the tape off, and then close your door, and it sticks it to the door. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna put these on all of our kitchen cupboards. I've just seen me do it. Pretty much all the ones we've seen so far are adjustable, so you just twist them one way or the other and it comes further out or further in. So that's why you just sort of recess it a little bit, then you just twist that accordingly. Uh, you do have to do it before you put your shelves on. So we can't do that one at the moment because the shelves are in. So we'll have to work out something. I really don't want to take the shelves out, but then we're going to have to. But yeah, it's pretty simple. Okay, so I'm just building a cutlery drawer now. Uh, the little metal basket things that we bought didn't really fit, so we're gonna build our own drawer. Uh, so I'm just using nine mil ply for the top, bottoms and sides and front and stuff. And then I've got this um, eight mil 65 uh, pine that we're gonna use as like the separators for all the different kinds of cutlery. So, yeah. Alright, so I've just cut some dividers out of 85 by 8 mil uh, pine. And I've just placed them in there with sort of some knives and forks and some utensils, just so I can work out the correct sizing. Now I'll glue those dividers together. So they're just in here at the moment. I'll glue them together and then we can, yeah, put them in. I've uh, obviously painted the drawer white since the last time I recorded. And I'll, uh, I'll paint those white too before I put them in, probably. Alright, so I'm just going to put the drawer slides on now. So I've measured 2 centimeters in and 2 centimeters up on the... Uh, what is this? The shelf that's uh, going in the, the cupboard that it's going on. So I'm just going to screw that in now. And I'll work out how I'm going to put it on the actual drawer. Apparently I did it the wrong way around. You're supposed to put the bit on the drawer first and then work out where it goes on the shelf or the cabinet. So I'm sort of having to reverse engineer it a bit. But I think I'm gonna get it. See if it works. Mm. Yeah, hey, it kind of doesn't work super well, but hopefully it'll get better. Okay, 
Okay, so this is our little spot for our microwave. So we've put a shelf up above it, and then we've got this piece sits at the feet, and that piece sits at the back, so it can't come forwards or backwards. We'll then put this piece that I'll just grab and bring around. In. Probably should have tested that first because clearly I've put that in the wrong spot. I did say it was off. Or maybe it's not going to be a problem. So that goes in and the microwave just goes into that hole. Uh, it is eight centimeters over the microwave because it says to leave eight centimeters of ventilation around the top. So yeah, that's it. Okay, so where I originally put the back piece was too far back because I just went off the measurements of the microwave which includes this bit here. So I've just taken it off, now I'm just going to push it up, snug against the microwave and nail it in. That way it uh, shouldn't go anywhere. Okay, so that's it for our uh, kitchen install video. A few things to mention, those baskets we got aren't great, they work and they're good for organization and that sort of thing but the runners that they're on are rather poor so they don't actually come all the way out of the drawers you can't really get to the back of them uh, that drawer that we made is much better because it does that so making your own drawers is probably a better solution um, and drawers are just better than cupboards I reckon anyway so everywhere we've got cupboards where we don't have those metal things we're currently looking at ways to get like storage tubs or something on wheels so that we can pull what's in there out anyway. So drawers, definitely better than cupboards. Uh, another thing that we've had to do is get little door stops for them. Because they're not um, push to close or soft close or anything like that, when we're driving they can actually push our push to close doors open and then stuff just goes everywhere. So when those baskets don't move, the push to close um, door openers are perfect it's just those baskets aren't great and they're really expensive too so yeah maybe the simple human ones aren't great for a motorhome uh otherwise that's it i hope you enjoyed this video please like subscribe and share and until next time see ya